This is activity three, different types of systems from lesson 13, solving systems of equations, and this is unit four, linear equations and linear systems. And in this activity, there are three types of systems of equations. One is when the graphs of the equations intersect. The second is when the graphs of the equations are parallel. And the third is when the graphs of the equations are the same. When the system of equations has a single solution, that means that the graphs have different slopes and those lines will intersect. When the system of equations has zero solutions, that means that the graphs have the same slopes, but different y-intercepts, so the graphs are parallel. They never intersect. There is never a solution to that system of equations. And finally, when there are infinitely many solutions, that means the graphs are the, have the same slopes, and the graphs have the same y-intercepts. They are the same lines or the same graphs. So there are infinitely many solutions. There are five problems, A through E. And for A, there's just one solution, a single solution, which means that the slopes of the two graphs, the graph defined by this equation and the graph defined by this equation, those two slopes will be different. They will, those graphs will intersect, those lines will intersect, and that will be the one solution. And you can begin to see the different slopes right here. This negative two is gonna be distributed to x minus five halves. So this is gonna become a negative two x. This is gonna become a negative four x. Those are the slopes, negative four and negative two. Different slopes, those lines will intersect. Now before I work through this equation, what I'm gonna do is put this into the slope intercept form. And as I do that, I'm gonna change this subtraction to addition. It just helps me keep track of the distribution of this negative four a little bit easier. So I'm gonna use the inverse operation, which is addition, and the additive inverse, which is negative two. So this is the same, this results in the same value as this up here. So I haven't changed anything, I've just rewritten it in a different form. So this is a negative four x, and so a negative four times a negative two is positive eight. So this is one equation. The second equation, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use the inverse operation and the additive inverse. So I'm gonna add a negative five halves. So a negative two times this x is a negative two x, and a negative two times a negative five halves is going to be a positive, and these twos cancel, it will be a positive five. So different slopes. These lines will intersect, the graphs will intersect. And here's what it looks like right here. So these two lines intersect, we're gonna zoom in on this. This red graph is, has a slope of negative four. So you go over one unit to the right. Remember, this is a y-intercept of eight. So one unit along the x-axis, a negative four units. It's gonna go down negative four units right here. And this blue line has a slope of negative two. So one unit along the x-axis, y-intercept of five, one unit along the x-axis, and negative two units along the y-axis. So the difference in these y-intercepts is three units from this eight to this five, and the difference in the slope is two units. So this gap is gonna close two units for every unit along the x-axis, but you have three units for the gap to close. So in one unit along the x-axis, it closes two units, so the difference now is just one. So it's right here. That difference goes from three, one, two, three, to one, right here, one, zero, one. And then to close this gap one more unit, you only, go, you only have to go one half of a unit along the x-axis. So go half of a unit and the intersection is right here. That's because for every one unit along the x-axis, axis, this gap closes two units. So you just have to go to close one more unit. You just have to go one half of a unit along the x-axis to right here. So when we do the algebra, you're gonna see exactly those same calculations. So the difference in the y-intercepts is this eight minus this five, which is this three right here. And the difference in the slopes is this negative two minus this negative four, which is adding four. So it's a positive two right here. 
and then I have a difference of three, and I'm going to take two units out of that three each time. How many times can I do that? That's three divided by two. So the x coordinate is three halves. To figure out the y coordinate, just replace x with three halves in either equation. So I use this equation, a negative two divided by two, the twos cancel out. This is negative three. Five plus negative three is positive two. So y is two and x is three halves. So x is three halves and y is two right there. And so the um, coordinate pair that solves this system of equations is three halves two. It's the only point that is shared between the two equations at the same time. Given the same x value, you get out the same y value. B also only has a single solution, meaning that the graph of each of these equations will have different slopes. So you can see that the slope of this graph for this equation will have a slope of 2, and the slope of this graph for this equation, once you use the distributive property, will have a slope of 5, meaning for every unit along the x-axis, this graph will go up 2 units along the y-axis, and for every unit along the x-axis, this graph will go up the 5 units along the y-axis. So using the distributive property, 5 times x is 5x. And I'm going to change this factor right here. Instead of x minus a positive 3, I'm going to use the inverse operation of addition and the additive inverse of a negative 3 and change this to addition so that when I use the distributive property, this is a negative 15. So that's the y-intercept at negative 15. This expression, just changing the subtraction to addition using the additive inverse, shows me that this y-intercept is negative 6. So different slopes, that means that the lines will intersect. The graphs of, of the equations will intersect. And here is those graphs. So a slope of 2, go over 1 unit along the x-axis, up 2 units along the y-axis, and a slope of 5, 1 unit along the x-axis, up 5 units along the y-axis. So zoom in a little bit. So these graphs have a difference in their y-intercepts of 9 units. They are 9 units apart, and they are closer by 3 units for every unit along the x-axis because the difference in the slopes is 3. 5 minus 2 is 3. So they're 9 units apart. Go over 1 unit along the x-axis. Now they're 6 units apart, so you take out 3 of those units. Go over 1 more unit along the x-axis right here. So now they're 3 units apart. And go over 1 more unit along the x-axis, and they intersect. So it's 9 units separation, 6 units separation, 3 units separation, and then they intersect. So it's this nine units, and how many times can I remove three units out of that? Three times. So x is equal to three. One, two, three. And over here, they intersect. So if I set these two expressions equal to each other, this expression here and this expression here, you'll see that going through the algebra, the difference in the slopes is 3x. So this 5x minus this 2x is 3x right here, so that's a slope of 3. And the difference in the y-intercepts is this negative 6 minus a negative 15, or adding a positive 15, and that equals 9. So 9 units apart. How many times can I take 3 out of those 9 units? That's 9 divided by 3 equals 3. To figure out the y-coordinate, just use either of these expressions, replace x with 3, so using this expression, 2 times 3 is 6, plus a negative 6 is 0. So the solution is that the ordered pair of 3 for the x-coordinate and 0 for the y-coordinate. So 3, 0. That is the only place where the value for x in either equation will give you the same value for y. So x is 3, y is 0 for both equations both graphs. For C, there are no solutions for the system of equations. And what that means is that the graph 
for both of these equations has the same slope. And you can see it right here. That slope is 2 for this equation, and that slope is also 2 for the second equation. Yet they have different y-intercepts. We're going to look at this a little bit more closely, but they are parallel lines that cross the y-axis at different places. So here's the first equation. All I did with the first equation is I just emphasized that this is a positive 3 right here. So this is 2x plus a positive 3. So the y-intercept is positive 3, and the slope is 2. For the other equation, I rewrote this as addition. So I use the inverse operation, and the additive inverse of a positive 3 is a, I'm sorry, a positive 5 is a negative 5. And so this equation has a slope of 2 and a y-intercept. The graph has a y-intercept of negative 5. So they have the same slopes but different y-intercepts. These lines are parallel, so they will never intersect. There is no solution for this system. So here are the two graphs. And if we zoom in on this a little bit more, this blue graph has a slope of positive 2. So for every unit along the x-axis, it goes up 2 units along the y-axis. So if you go out 4 units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units, it's going to go up 10 units along the y-axis. And if you go in the negative direction, two units, it's going to go four units along the y-axis, a negative four units. So one, two, three, four. The red graph also has a slope of positive two. So for every one unit along the x-axis, it goes up two units, um, a negative two units, negative four units, a negative one, two, three, four, five units. This is going to be a negative ten units. So every... For every unit along the x-axis, it's twice as long along the y-axis, so it has a slope of positive 2. So the difference in the slopes is 0. But notice that the difference in the y-intercepts is 8 units. So this graph cro crosses the y-axis at positive 3. This graph crosses the y-axis at negative 5. That difference is 8 units. And so how many times can you take 0 units out of 8 units? That is undefined. 8 divided by 0 is undefined. And if you look at the algebra, set these two expressions equal to each other. Subtract 2x from both sides. This is 0. This is 0. So this is a positive 3 equals negative 5. Subtract that positive 3 from both sides. And you get 0 equals negative 8. It doesn't make any sense. So there is no solution for this system of equations. D also has no solution. So that, once again, means that the, the slope of the graph for each of these equations is going to be the same. Now, this is hidden a little bit because this is the distributed property and you have to collect like terms. But you're going to end up with an equation that has the same slope but a different y-intercept. So the first equation... I'm just adding 0 as the y-intercept. So this is a negative 6 is the slope of the graph of this equation. And this is going to go through the origin where y equals 0 and actually x equals 0. So the second equation, I'm going to rewrite the subtraction as addition. So the, using the inverse operation and using the additive inverse, this is adding a negative 2 so that when I use the distributive property, it's just easier for me to follow the signs of the multiplication. So this is negative 5x plus, and so a negative 5 times a negative 2 is a positive 10, but I don't have to worry about the operation. The operation stays as addition. So this is negative 5x plus a positive 10 plus a negative 1x. So I put that 1 here. This is a negative 1x, so that when I combine the x's, I have a negative 5x plus a negative 1x, that's negative 6x. So the slope is the same, negative 6, but the y-intercept is different. Here it's a positive 10, here it is 0. So same slopes, different y-intercepts. These lines are parallel, the graphs of the lines are, uh, the graphs of the equations are parallel, so there is no solution to this system of equations. So here are the two graphs. Zoom in a little bit. These graphs are 10 units apart, so the difference in the y-intercept is 10 units. 
So the slope is the same, and it's negative 6 in both cases. So for this red graph, for every unit along the x-axis, it's going to go down 6 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I negative 6 along the y-axis for every unit along the x-axis. You go this way, if you go in the negative direction, it's a negative 2 units along the x-axis. So it's going to be a positive 12 units along the y-axis. It is the same thing for this blue graph. A negative 1 unit along the x-axis, a positive 6 units along the y-axis, or a positive 1, 2, 3 units along the x-axis is going to be a negative 18 units along the y-axis. So the slope is a negative 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Negative 18. So if I set these two expressions equal to each other, a negative 6x plus 0 equals a negative 6x plus positive 10. If I add a positive 6x to both sides, I'm going to get 0 here, I'm going to get 0 here, and so I'm going to be left with 0 equals a positive 10, which doesn't make any sense. There is no solution. These graphs will never intersect. There's no solution to this system of equations. The system of equations for E has an infinite number of solutions. And so what that means is that when I simplify this expression right here, it's going to be exactly the same as this expression right here, which is already simplified. And you can see that. This is, if I use the distributive property, 3 times 2x is going to be 6x right here. You can subtract 4x from that 6x, and you're going to get 2x. And this 3 times this 1 right here is going to give you 3 the same as this 3 right here. So what that means is that whatever value I choose for x, I'm going to get the same value for y for either equation. So this system of equations has an infinite number of solutions because it's the same line. So here's the steps to simplify this expression right here. So I'm going to change the subtraction to addition. So I'm going to use the inverse operation and the additive inverse just so that I can keep track of what happens with this negative 4x right here. And so 3 times 2x is equal to 6x plus 3. 3 times 1 is 3 plus a negative 4x. Well, 6x plus a negative 4x is that 2x right there plus 3. So the graphs for both equations will have a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 3. So here's the other equation. It's exactly the same. Slope of 2, y-intercept of 3. Same slopes. Same y-intercepts, the lines or the graphs are the same. They are equal. So there are infinitely many solutions that solve this system of equations. And here's the graph. So I'm going to zoom in on it. So it has a slope of 2. So for every unit along the x-axis, it's going to go up 2 units or 2 units in the positive direction. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this will go 10 units in the positive direction, or if you go in the negative direction, it's a negative 1 unit, negative 2 units, or a negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units, and this will be a negative 10 units. So a slope of a positive 2. The difference in the y-intercept is 0. It's the same thing. The difference in the slopes is 0. And so it says right here, x is equal to 0 divided by 0. It's really undefined. I say or 0. That's, I don't think that's correct. It's just stated as being undefined. If x is 0, then y is going to be the y-intercept. Y is going to be equal to 3. So if I set these two expressions equal to each other, 2x plus 3 equals 2x plus 3, add a negative 3 to each side, or subtract 3 from each side, you get 2x equals 2x. Divide that by 2, x equals x. So whatever value I choose for x, I'm going to get the same value for y. So there are infinitely many solutions to this system of equations. So every value of x will result in the same value of y for both equations.